So I'm back on the John Deere Model B at the Old Mill Pond. I took the carburetor off. I didn't film that because that's pretty... Yeah, if you guys can't figure out how to pull a carburetor off a of John Deere B, you're probably watching the wrong channel. But there's the carbonator. I pulled that plug off the end right there. Had a little spring that set on there like that. And they got that little gasket on there. So something I like to do is whenever I set stuff down, one, I like to get paper towels, set it on, makes finding the parts easier. And then you put the parts that <clears throat> came off. So we'll pull that bowl off, that exposes the float. That's the rest of the carburetor. Pull this little screen off. Now this is like a little fuel, fuel screener, like a little filter. Focus. Ooh, there it goes. There's like a little screen in there that you can kind of, kind of see. And then that's the jet down in there. So I got to pull that jet out and then see if we need to put a new seat in it. And no, that's not the jet. Huh? I'm sorry. Uh, pull that float and uh, needle valve out, a needle seat. See if we need to relap it. Okay, so we got the. That's the float. This is the little float needle valve, um, whatever you call it. I forget my carburetor terms. Focus! The actual, the, the needle valve in the seat actually looks pretty good. And what you want to look for is right around this, this ridge, stupid non-focusing, right around the tip, right there, you want to look to see if there's a ridge built up. So what we'll do on this one, just clean it up, we'll put it back in. I'm guessing the problem is if you look at this, the way this float is set up, I mean, it's, it's angled down a little. It's angled down a little too low, so I think we need to bend it. And all you do is you bend this little uh, arm to where it'll uh, uh, fill up a little better. Now, I did read, or uh, one of the guys in the comments wrote me, said that, you know, these John Deere Bs had a really bad problem with the fuel overflowing into the engine to the point where supposedly John Deere came out with the... Uh, a shutoff hmm. to where you put it in line and whenever you turn it off it shut the fuel off automatically um i didn't research that i don't know if you guys know uh what the guy's talking about and have a link for it put it down here would be we would be thrilled to put one on the tractor but the only way i know how to rig up one is like with an electronic solenoid and we really don't want to put any like current new technology within eyesight where you can see it we want to try to stick with old school stuff so right now we're probably just going to put a hand shut off valve and hope everybody remembers if not, we'll be back um, uh, draining oil out of the... <laughs> well, with you here, you should be able to uh, start it up and let it drive every, you know, once a week. So we'll yeah, know. We will. And then we'll shut we'll shut it off and we'll run the fuel out of the carburetor bowl. Yeah. Is what we'll do. So we'll leave it running until it's dry. But something on these... Um, uh, this is actually hollow inside. This, is, this float, it's like a brass. Uh, it's stamped brass and then they solder it together. These were really bad for leaking. So what you want to do is you can get a um, uh, any kind of bucket of liquid. Now, this looks like oil. It's not. It's some kind of old <laughs> apple cider vinegar. Um, you don't have to use apple cider vinegar, just so you know. You can use water. But all you do is you dunk this down in there, and you're looking for bubbles. And also, once you dump this thing down in there, you just press it down. You hold it down for a second, and you take it back out. So what you do is you hold it underneath the, uh, the liquid. You pick it back up, dry it off. And you shake it and you're feeling and listening for any liquid inside there. Now this one feels tight and dry. Mmm, we're gonna smell so fruity. We'll do that off camera. I uh, gotta hold it down there for about, you know, 10, 20 seconds. That's about it. And then we'll dry it off and we'll see if there's any holes in her. Found a hole right there. See where that little crack is? Mmm, right there, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just so you guys know what, what'll happen is um is this thing sitting there, it's supposed to to float as the fuel level comes up that pushes that needle valve into that seat, wherever Justin put the seat at, right there. Push that needle valve up into this seat. So I don't know where we were at, but we have a crack there. Pretty substantial crack. Oh, come on. Focus, you. So we're gonna try to solder that back up, hopefully. Um, so what happens, that float sits in here, gas fills up this bowl, it pushes this needle into this seat, and it's supposed to uh, apply enough pressure to that seat to shut off the flow of gas. So if there's anything wrong with this seat, this needle on here, then it'll, uh, uh, like even like the, you can't tell in the, the video because it won't focus. Excuse my dirty hands. 
clean money. Anyway, um, if there's anything on that seat, especially like weed eaters and uh, smaller engines, they have like a little kind of rubberized tip. So what you can do is you take a, a, a Q-tip with some valve lapping compound. You stick it in that hole. You run it around that hole a little bit. That kind of laps the hole, makes it all nice and shiny. And then you kind of clean this up the best you can. If you don't have one available, it's kind of better just to buy a new one. But this one looks pretty good. So we're going to try to fix that float, clean the old bowl out here, and put the needle and seat back in. What is that? Is that it's, lead? Yeah. Acid filled. Man, acid. that's going to eat holes through it, right? <laughs> acid filled lead solder. You think that's like the LSD acid type? Um. Hey, Dale, take a bite of it. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Virgin Metals, highest quality. Keister. <laughs> so I got that, uh, that needle seat pretty clean. Um, had to put some gloves on. You see down in there. So all you do is you take you some Q tips. Get you some of that lapping compound. Start out with the coarse, stick it in the hole. Now what I did, I stuck the seat down in that socket like that. Ran the end, jammed the Q-tip down in the end to clean it out, and then um, cleaned up the end of the, the needle there. So for the fine stuff, once I do that on the, the the fine, like once you do the coarse, you got to clean it all out. And then you start over with the fine, try to. Uh, uh, Re, re burnish they're not varnish but try to redo that seat <clears throat> i stick a bunch of compound in there and i stick the uh needle down in there and i hold the needle try to lap the two together so it should be sticking pretty good now i'm going to try to do a little makeshift test where i hold it in like that and i fill that up full of fluid to see if it'll hold fluid and if it holds fluid great but if not we gotta try again you like uh, today's project is I'm gonna fix this car and then you're done and then you're like I fixed it and you need to show people like your mad skills and what you're No, he what was, I'm what I'm brace. doing has gotten me 82 something thousand subscribers He's gonna braze this up and not show you guys That's a shame. I wasn't even doing that I was heating it to get all the junk out of the inside of it and he got all excited now He's heating it to get all the junk out inside of it. Well, we needed something to edit out of here. Oh, I'm not editing this. It's like Chucky on my videos, and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll edit that out later. <laughs> it well, makes every video. What we're doing is we're venting this, right? We're getting everything out from the inside. You know, this was in a gas can or a gas tank, the bottom of a bowl. Sorry. Carburetor. This was in a carburetor. And, to uh, the bottom of the fuel injection. This was in the bottom of the uh, blinker. All right, so we're ready to go. We'll yep. Box her up, rock and roll. So something else that we did off camera, as you can tell, well. All right, it's probably going to be pretty hard to tell. We got a little grinder and we veed out that crack a little way. So, just, man, I think it's hot. Just a smudge, just a smidge it. Oh, yeah, she's good. We're going to flux her up. Yeah, she's flowing in real good. That flux is flowing right in that hole. That's my favorite kind of flux. The flux that goes right in the hole. Mm hmm. Key is you got to use the right amount of flux. Yeah, use the whole thing. Use a spoon. You gotta get a spoon in there. No, I'm just kidding. That's why I use five gallon buckets of flux. Now, you heat you... the whole part up and dump it in the flux. We're actually using the wrong. I was tempted to tin it, um, which we may end up having to do, and we may this may fail regardless. And we may end up having to use like a boxy. So we got some setter there, special lead base. Valley, I think we got it. So if you guys see any problem with how this is being done, make sure you go to Justin's channel and leave the comments on his channel about how it was improperly done. Is there a hole in it or what? I see something over here and I can't tell what it is. Is that a little nipple? I was thinking we need to tin it first, to be honest with you. But uh, the way it flowed out like that really quick, I was, I was pretty happy with it. No, not the nipple. That's okay. It was right here at the tip. Um, what I was going to do, guys, is tint it out, which, you know, I was going to apply a little bit and brush it on there until it stuck. Um, but honestly, that might work. Well, let's let it air cool for a little bit, and then we'll... I uh hold it with my bare hands. Oh, it's already air cooled? Because I already, I got bare, it's so thin. I got bare hands. Let's, uh, let's dip it in some coffee or something. All right, we're going to dunk it down in the water. See if you see any bubbles coming up. I don't see any bubbles. Might be good to go for a little while. And it's just a little bit of solder right there. That's from you know the original time it was put together. No bubbles. That's why they don't make these out of brass anymore. Had real bad problems with them cracking. Any 
that, that you know that vibration. I'm pretty sure brass is. Are you editing this? No. <laughs> yeah, brass will work hard. Brass will work hard and just like aluminum. Are we gonna coat it in anything? Yeah. So we'll put the seat back in here. Make sure we torque it down nice and click, click. That yeah, was properly uh, seven foot pounds. Oh, you know what? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Put this part in first. Now, now we're cooking. Let's see. All right, hold it upside down like that. Probably an easier way to do this, but I don't know it. I need a flashlight. I think I got it first try, man. First try, no warm up. Very impressive. Well, you know, I just sleep at a Holiday Inn. Well, no, you didn't. Technically, it was outside of the Holiday Inn by the trash cans, but <laughs> still counts. Oh, no, I didn't last night. I stayed at somebody's floor. Had to listen to Justin and his wife. They were uh, giving their best monkey impression. I guess they're wrestling. Weird, man. What they were doing. And then of course, in the middle of the night, you know, Justin wakes up, comes over, he starts trying to cuddle with me. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I'm a cuddler. I like to cuddle after wrestling. <laughs> that's in there. So that's it. So now our float is fixed up. That should be a. Uh, Good to go. Should get our fuel stopped and everything. So now we got to do is reassemble this. Put our little gasketinator on there like that. Uh, tell me about that gasket there, big guy. So this was a uh, custom made and uh, good to the land, land. Good to the land. Oh, that's not the gasket. Oh, that's the old gasket. What's it doing? <laughs> it's over there. So oh, it's sitting there on a table. Is. So Bob, one of my patrons, sent me a gasket maker kit. And one issue we had was that we couldn't cut. See, look at the gasket here. We couldn't cut the inside of the gasket. We didn't have a, a punch big enough, obviously. And these are big punches um, so I just took small bites around the edge and it worked out fine now we were able to you know sit the uh, part on here and just cut around it but we got like one or two spots that we could clean up um, but I mean it ha that, that was cut really quick and it worked out fine yeah I'm worked. happy with it you happy with it yeah it'd be fine yeah until it's not until until it doesn't work anymore and then we'll just uh, order the proper kit oh, I wish I need to cut those gaskets oh we do that, that'd be pretty easy I need to give me a, a brass hammer so I'm not pounding on this tool. I mean, the whole tool's hardened, but... Okay, so we're using this little refrigerator as a storage place, but this is all of our gasket material. So as opposed to uh, going out and buying $90 kits, and on every single tractor we have out here, we're cutting all of our own. So we got rubberized gasket, we got rubber cork gasket, and we've got all the different paper size and styles of gasket material here. And the one Steven's using is rubberized. Somebody's like, oh, you wasted so much gasket material. Well, the reason I like this way is because it gives you the room to, you know, you can hang on to it, you can do everything you need to do, and you can use every one of those old pieces. Hammer technique. A hammer, hammer. Yeah, the most key, key thing is to not let it. So it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Then we take the hole cutter motor. Oh, that's why that one looked different. Looks so weird. I think that'll work, you think? Uh, I think that's like the, actually the perfect size. What is that, 35 millimeter? We'll just line it up. <laughs> really good if we actually had some light. Yeah, we're working on it. If you electricians want to come out and donate your time. Yep. That's the thing. We would already have light here. We have to have licensed electrician. This is a city city place, so I can't just hang up my lights. I got my lights right here. I want them up. These sweet little LEDs Sansy sent me. And um, 
these are pretty cool so they're motion detector lights right they're led bars but all you have to do is turn the light on and then turn it off and turn it back on and they'll stay on they got a little computer in them and i think they're pretty awesome so just right there he'll just tap it to find his hole You never had a channel narrator, have you? I'll edit it out. <laughs> That's how you build a gasket. One down, one to go. Beautiful. So that's it. I mean, uh, building gaskets is really, really simple. Uh, it's not that big of a complicated deal. Now, depending on how, you know, like this is a pretty easy gasket, you know, to make. So uh, there are some that take you a lot longer that have a whole bunch of holes, like water pump gaskets are notoriously a pain in the butt to do. But I've made water pump gaskets in the field too. So we'll make one more of these and then we'll stab the carburetor on. I got the bowl back on. Made the ah, oh, don't strip it. Made the gaskets there. Um, all we got left is to put our little spring deal on. Now this one, I don't know if we, it doesn't look too bad. Got that little screen in there, so put it back on there. It's got a little gasket on top. Put the gasket stuck on there pretty good and it still seems like it's got a little life left in it. Always kind of bothered me when people like, they rebuild carburetors like this. And all the brass stuff, I think it looks cooler if you just, if you take all this stuff off and you wire wheel it. So that way you have like the original carburetor, but you have all like the brass components, like exposed brass, because then it weathers and it looks like it's supposed to. I mean, maybe John Deere, you know, painted over it and I'm sure that's factory, because the dude that used to own this place, it didn't seem like he really did anything without uh, trying to get it back to factory. and I'll tie you to the water wheel. And when it comes up to the water, you just hold it and that'll wash it out. And then as you go down, it'll dump it out, right? Yeah, sounds good. Perfect plan. That's what you meant by using the water wheel to clean out gas tanks? You're pretty smart. Pretty <laughs> fart smeller. Smart. So smart that I'm using the wrong size wrench. Uh, there's a crescent to your right. Or I can use a proper. Hey, are these yours? Uh, yes. Ah, the exact same pair, but blue. It's like, who in the heck up here would have some snap-on anything? <laughs> the body tech. I don't know why. Do snap-on guys even go to body shops? Yeah. Putting the carburetor back on here, trying to figure out where the, oh, the, the last bolt is stuck to it. Uh, I'm gonna tighten the carburetor down. We got a, now last time we were here, we broke this bowl off because the um, uh, magnesium count uh, uh, housing to it snapped. Did some snap city action, so we're gonna pull it off, clean this one out. Hopefully, this thing will fire up. And just to uh, for the naysayers in the comments, yes, we realized that the battery it's it's positive ground. We hooked the positive side to the positive cable, which went to the ground of the tractor, and the negative side to the starter. Got all these stupid comments about that, and like, oh, you don't realize it's negative positive. I'm like, <laughs> the engine's spinning the correct way, and we hooked it up correctly. I mean. Like it made any difference at all. I think some people just like to listen to themselves talk on their own. Like they put their comment and they reread their own comment just to hear their own voice in their head. <laughs> if you guys didn't know that, yes, a lot of most old tractors are pot called positive ground, where uh, the positive actually goes to the frame and then the negative actually goes to the starter. It's kind of how they did things back in the day, and then they figured out that that causes a lot of corrosion issues if you do it that way. So. Go the other way. Put the carburetor on and we'll get some gas flowing to her and hopefully we'll get it running. So you guys that don't know, I did the lipstick challenge and we hit a thousand bucks last live stream. Oh, I did not know you hit a thousand. We hit it, man. <laughs> a couple of guys hit it, so I'm at a thousand. Well, my makeup artist called and says she's ready to go. We'll, we'll have to get her done and then make get it filmed and then... I figured the, the, that video will drop the morning I go to the meet and greet oh did i tell you about the uh, <laughs> uh one guy left me a crappy comment so i left him a crappy comment back and then he left the reply saying i hope that you i hope you're proud of your comment i took a uh, screenshot of this and sent it to a friend of mine who knows somebody that knows matt character and he's going to show it to him and he's going to know what kind of true person you are <laughs> <laughs> messy youtuber <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> like, knock yourself out, man. I'm sure he's got that uh, that much time to go <laughs> looking at his buddy's phone. That is one universal truth when it comes to YouTube. Anybody that has a channel with more than about, oh, I'd say 10, 15,000 views, probably some, a lot of them with less, uh, are fully aware of how uh, people in the comments can get a little carried away with the information sometimes. So, But we shall see. Maybe I get there and he's like, so-and-so sent me a text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like it? That's pretty clever, man. I'm not calling him a, calling him names. It's pretty. <laughs> we should just re-engineer this whole deal. We could pull his engine out and put a two JZ motor in it. Ooh. Overnight parts from Japan. Ooh. You never had your car. I almost had you. You almost had me. Man, it doesn't matter if you land by a, a yard or a cubic centimeter. They're over there plotting against us. Mm-hmm. I've seen their kind before. We're on to your kind, ninjas. Okay, so to test to see if the float is fixed on the carburetor, we left the fuel on the car on on the carburetor, and we left the valve out, and it's still dripping. <clears throat> it's still dripping. Yeah, it's still leaking. So we are getting fuel in the crankcase. What's the oil look like? It's thin. Huh? Yeah. It's that that float's still uh still dripping. Okay. But I don't know if we're gonna do anything about it or not. Um, you just have to close the valve every single time you're off the tractor. I might uh, I might come up with some sort of design or something that um you know, looks old school but it's new school runs off the ignition or something to keep the valve open. Um, and I was told that this is a major problem with these tractors. They had a really bad problem with them to the point that John Deere actually came up. Uh, with and uh, a setup, like I said in the earlier part of the video, they come up with a setup to where when it shut down, it actually shut the fuel off. 
So I'll probably come up with something like that. Um, other than getting another carburetor, but the problem with getting another carburetor and new pieces in it is I've been told this is a common problem with the John Deere B's. So I'm not that worried about it. But we will shut the fuel off and drain the oil out again. And hopefully in the meantime, we will remember to shut the fuel off. But that concludes today's video for the John Deere B. We did get it running, which is a positive. Uh, we did some work on a carburetor. Um, we got the fuel bowl figured out and everything. But, you know, old tractors. When it comes to old tractors, Justin, what's the common thing for old tractors and old equipment? Uh, well, once you get them running right and you get everything set up on them, which could take a while, they're they're incredible. Uh, but uh, you but just, they still always need stuff, right? You got to... You gotta maintain them, and you gotta fix little quirky problems that they have. Yeah, it's but, just I mean, comes with the territory. I own a Mahindra, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, this this is nothing for me. Yeah. So we're not that concerned about it. This was uh, kind of what we thought was going to happen. You know, that's why we we wanted to test it and everything. But oh well. If you guys like the video, throw a comment down in the story or down in the uh, throw your story down in the comment about your own John uh, Deere B experience and. If you guys have any experience with the shutoff that somebody else told me about, like the setup or pictures or a link or whatever, throw it in the comments so I can find it. I'd, I'd like to see what they were talking about. Um, it was a, when you shut the engine off, it was a valve that went in between the tank and the carburetor that automatically shut the fuel off after the engine died. Sounds kind of fishy to me, but maybe you guys know better. I appreciate it. Hit the like button over here. Comment, subscribe, and Say it, Justin. Get out and fix something. Yeah.